Welcome to Rock Solid Productions, where in this episode we are going to take you through the trials of region free modding our Turbo Graphics 16 and why you would even want to do it. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, Gary from Rock Solid Productions. Before we get into today's episode, I just want to take a second and thank you for stopping by, watching what we have going on here, and supporting the channel. I really do appreciate it. Just by watching what we're doing here, you're supporting what we're doing here and it is amazing of all the people who have joined the channel recently and discovered what we have going on here. Thank you all so very, very much. If you like what you see here, I invite you to check out some of the other videos we have here on the channel. After this one, of course, we've got other mods and tutorials that we've done. Even the video where we actually picked this up a year ago from the weekend that I am filming this video from Pat at Show Me Retro. And if you haven't checked out Pat's videos yet, I will have him linked right up there. And as always, if you want to stay the most informed and up-to-date with everything we have going on here on the channel, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and that bell notification, that way every time we upload new content, you are kept the most informed and up-to-date, and you'd be amazed how many people watch our videos who aren't subscribed. So, thank you all for watching, subscribe if you like what you see. Now the TurboGrafx-16 I never had when I was a kid. I always wanted one though, it was always that dirty little secret, like I owned a Genesis, Nintendo kid, I owned a Genesis. I traded it back in for another Super Nintendo. I just didn't have the appreciation for it back then that I do now. And like I mentioned, a year ago, I picked this up from the Mo GameCon Jr. from Pat at Show Me Retro. And I've done a few things to it as, you know, since then. Now, it didn't come with any controllers, power supply, cables, nothing. This is what I got. And since then, I've picked up the spark plug from Insurrection Industries so I can go straight to SCART cables or RGB cables if I want to. I've picked up some uh, controllers from old school that are are pretty good just really short and now the latest thing I'm going to do to this is I'm going to go ahead and region free mod this the reason behind this is the games here in the US we didn't have the greatest distribution of TurboGrafx 16 games and the games for the PC engine what's playing behind me here actually on my TurboGrafx 16 mini you know great games physically the same hue card design but they were region locked but you can go ahead and bypass that region locking with a simple board and switch sold by GameTech.us. Jason over there has got so many cool mods. If you are looking for mod service or things to do to your systems, definitely check Jason out. He's the guy that I actually got my uh, mod kit for my uh, NES HDMI mod. I'm actually ordering also a new case for my Dreamcast. I can't wait till it gets here to show you all. We're gonna be doing that here too. But what we're gonna be doing in this one, so we are gonna walk you through the process of region modding this. Think of this more of a blog than a tutorial. Jason has the definitive tutorial that I will actually be following as I go along and do this. But hopefully in a few simple and easy steps, we will be able to play import PC Engine games because there's more of them. They're ones we didn't get here in the States and they're a lot less expensive. Let's get the soldering iron going and let's get started. So here we have our TurboGrafx-16 on the bench along with all the parts that we need. Soldering iron I'll turn on in a minute. We want to get inside of this first. And one thing I didn't expect, these are actually security bits. So for that I have my 4.5 millimeter security bit here and I'm going to just use my Hitachi drill driver like I always do to go ahead and open this stuff up. Now again consider this more of a vlog of how I'm doing this versus a tutorial. Uh, Jason has the definitive way to put this in. I highly recommend you check out his video. I've actually never looked inside of a TurboGrafx until about a year ago. I didn't have one that I could have looked inside of. Does this pull right out? No, we are screwed down. Looks like there's two screw holes here. That may be it. There's a transistor here that may also hold everything down. And just swap out to a Phillips bit here and see if that uh, kind of takes care of it. If we do need to, to undo that one there as well. Pull those guys right out. Almost. It does feel like there's something over here. So we're going to back that screw out. Now this one is shorter and it also has a uh, fine thread and a washer on it. So we're going to put that one up there so we keep that separate. You know what it is? You got to take out those two screws there. Put 
hopefully that took care of it. There we go. And part of the issue to get that out was the fact that it kind of sits in the housing there. Uh, it was a tight fit. If you look down here, there is some dirt and crud. We'll go ahead and we'll spray this out with some um, uh, soapy water. Let that clean up here in a little bit. So now this RF shield is soldered into place there, 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 right there, and a couple other spots too. My understanding is you can go ahead and just pop the board right there, uh, or pop it off of the board right there and you'll be fine. So I'm gonna just take my X-Acto knife, carefully pop that off. Now you can try to, you know what we're gonna do, we're gonna try to just unsolder it and see if that takes care of it. Uh, the thing to remember, this is a heat shield, so it will get hot, be very, very careful. That one's off, that one's off. Make sure that we've got clearance, clearance. Okay, there we go. And you can see that just the, the stresses here are helping pop it off of the board. So that's a good thing that one there. Yeah, this is coming off super, super easily. Half makes me wonder if someone had been in here once before. I think that's all the solder points, but there are two little screws here kind of hanging everything on that we'll go ahead and we'll pull those guys out. And just like that, we are inside of our TurboGrafx-16. Very cool. All right, so next we do need to pull off this bottom heat shield. Now, according to Jason, you can leave that top one off if you don't want to utilize it, but you absolutely do need to utilize this because the 7805 transistor screws to it as a heat sink. So uh, make sure that you don't uh, throw this away. I just hope that I'm not uh, sinking this onto the board more than it already was. I'm just gonna try to see if we can't get it, kind of a two-in-one sort of approach here. I'll pry up with my X-Acto knife. So here's what the issue is, is these pins actually go through the board. Um, yeah, so there's one right there as well, same thing. Oh, that's gonna suck. That is going to suck. All right, got that one. Again, be careful as you're soldering on something like this that you're not grabbing somewhere that is hot because um, this shield basically does act as a heat sink. All right, there, I think we got it. I think we got it. There we go. Awesome. There's a little rubberized uh, insulator on here too. Make sure you do not lose that. So here is, for those who have never seen the inside of a TG16, this is where the hue cards and everything go. You can see I did actually pull up a little bit on the board. No major deal there. Again, it's basically just a heat shield for you. Um, pretty neat looking. Overall, pretty clean. Uh, like I say, we are gonna spray it down here though in a second. And again, I just use CRC uh, QD Electronics Cleaner. Works well for stuff like this. Doesn't damage plastics. You know, just real quick. You could use like an isopropyl alcohol if you would like as well. And the reason why I'm cleaning this part of the board is this is actually where we're gonna be working. The area that we're gonna be working in is right around here. And that's the beautiful thing about Jason's board that he's designed is it's pretty much drop, solder, and go. So here's the board itself. And I'm gonna bring you in, let's get in kind of close here. I'm not gonna bring you in like Voltar would with his, ew, because I can't do it like he does because, well, he's just better at that than I am. Open up our, our package. Nice package. So we're just gonna drop this right around that little board there and you can see the pins drop in place. The one concern here is we need to flow the solder through these pinholes to make contact with these pads underneath. Um, and yeah, it is, it is these series of pads. Uh, what Jason did in his video is he used just a leg of an old capacitor or a diode or something like that that he had. Uh, I'm gonna be using a needle it basically it's the same thing where you're driving the solder down through those holes into the pads down below. Those pins there go right around the vias that we have and uh, pretty much solder it into place. So uh, we are gonna go ahead and we are going to prep our site here. 
So, and as you're getting everything set to solder these pins, you want to make sure that you are, you know, you can see the pads underneath here. I, I realize it's kind of hard to see, but it is important uh, that you do want to get everything in lined up that way. Now, one thing that I am going to do is I'm going to come in here and I just have a hemostat where basically when I let it go, the, the tip closes for me. And if you remember that if the tip is in, it counts vertebrae five. All right, so I have that held down in place. I'm going to use some no clean solder flux on our pins here. I'm going to just tack those down quick. Okay, I'm just going to hit that pin right there. That pin there. A little bit of excess, wipe it off. There we go. And now I can go ahead Remove the hemostat, and I can hit the other pins on here. I hit with just a touch more, no clean. There we go. And all that that's doing is making sure that we have a clean connection here as possible. And just like that, look how beautiful these solder joints are. So what you want to see on your solder joints is exactly what we have here. Nice, bright, and shiny. If they're dull looking, that's a cold solder joint that will cause issues. Uh, make sure that they look like this when you are soldering to ensure that you're getting the best overall connection as possible. All right, so we've got our wire that actually comes with the kit if you order it as such from uh, Jason. It's a nice you know, piece of wire we have here. We're gonna go ahead, we're just gonna separate the conductors here real quick and then we will strip them out. Having a good side cutters or a snips like that makes work like this a heck of a lot easier. Let's bring in our wire stripper here then. Now these conductors are actually cut a little bit on the long side. I'm gonna tin them, and once they're tinned, I'm gonna clip them down to the size that I want. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I actually have some solder flux paste here. I'm just going to dunk the conductors in, and we're gonna tin our contacts. As I learned as an altar boy, I always wipe the rim. Name the movie, anybody. I'll give you the answer in a second. Give you the actor, first of all, who said it was Leslie Nielsen. It was obviously a parody. Jesse the Body Ventura and Mean Gene Okerlund were also in as cameo appearances with Linda Blair, who is the lead actress in a movie called Repossessed. It was a spoof of The Exorcist. It's actually really stinking funny. We'll go ahead and we're going to Dunk these conductors, do the same basic thing. These are quite a bit shorter already. Just like that, those are 10 too. So the way this board is designed, it's basically just a straight shot from those three conductors to the three conductors on the switch itself. So you just go left to left, middle to middle, right to right. And doesn't matter if you go this way or that way, it just doesn't. So we're gonna go ahead, we're going to tin those pads, tin the conductors on the switch, and solder this up. And just use a little bit of flux. That on, that on, that on. So what I've done here is I've actually run the conductors through the holes on the switch itself, and I'm going to tack it down in the back. Uh, hopefully these don't move on me. Here's that one, here's that one, here's that one, I'm gonna hit that center one a little bit. Awesome! Okay, you can see our solder work. Now I am gonna come through and we are going to nip the tip. There's one, there's two, there's three, awesome. And we have our conductors separated a little bit more here. So now on these, I'm gonna put just a drop of no clean. And this is just a tenant. 
Now, I often get asked why I don't use a pliers a lot of time when I'm soldering like this. And there's a very simple reason why. If it's too hot for my fingers, it's probably too hot for the components. So it's kind of a safety measure to make sure that I am not overheating a component. And they just lay down there real nice and we're gonna just hit them all. So as you can see here, everything is real nice and shiny and bright. There is no uh, bridging or anything like that. At this point, the mod is installed, but we still need to cut those traces on the back. And oh God, that makes me nervous. The, and I know, stop being such a weenie. I just don't want to ruin the system. Now, before we go ahead and do that though, I am going to clean this up with some isopropyl. All right, so this is the point of no return. Now, it's important to note which pins and which traces we're cutting through, and it's these guys here. Oh, that hurts my heart. And I guess as long as you're seeing copper, you're okay. The last thing I need to do is figure out where I am going to mount the switch in the system because um, we got to go somewhere with it. All right, so we are almost to the end. Last thing we need to do is mount our switch. And I've got a lot of room on this side and I've got enough lead here that I think this is where I'm going to route it and put it on this side. Um, I could go on the front. I really don't want to do that, but put it on the side. It's one of those where I can really kind of hide where it is. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with my X-Acto knife and I'm gonna score that and that. So just two little score bits right there and right here. Now the nice thing is I have this opening here that pretty much I can use as a guide for how deep I wanna go. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come straight across and kinda just mark that and we're gonna make an opening right here for the switch to come through. But now, instead of actually going through and cutting this all out, I'm going to just cut an opening right here. Now, to do that, I've actually got my Dremel tool, and I'm gonna make a, four little screw holes, and then I'm going to cut that out and square it, and then we are gonna mount it with two little screws through the sides here. So, let's get on to that. I'm gonna drill a couple of pilot holes here. And everything lined up. So now we are going to break out the Dremel tool. Not exactly, still need to go a little bit larger. So for that, I'm gonna break out the files. Using something like a file gives you very nice, precise control as well to ensure that you're not removing too much material at one time. Almost there. Basically just wanna to get to my pilot holes. I am on the right side, just not on this left side. One more test fit here. And I think we'll actually be good. Oh yeah. Now one final thing we have to do is actually mount our switch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna bring it outside here and I'm gonna mark our holes. So for this I've just got a tapered reamer. All I'm gonna do is just mark that one. And again, much like what we did with our pilot hole, we're just going to drill a small hole here. So now that we have this one in, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the bit to kind of hold, hold it in place, get this side lined up now. Mark our hole here in a second. Sorry for the hand obstruction. All right, there we go with that. Mark our hole there. So there we have our screw holes. Now I am gonna come 
and just clean this up with my X-Acto knife real quick. Just knock down any edges. So what I'm gonna do next, before I actually put the screws in here, I'm actually going to taper reamer this open a little bit. And I know that's not the proper term, but you know what I mean. Now I'm gonna run the screws through here first before I attach the switch. All right, awesome, that one's good then too. So now I'm gonna go ahead, I am gonna put a washer on the outside of the screw just to make sure it doesn't dig in and damage the, uh, the outer plastic. Get that started there. I actually have, uh, this is a two millimeter Allen wrench I'm using here. So I've got the screws kind of started. So again, I'm just using a two millimeter Allen wrench to get these started. So now you can kind of see how much I have poking through just to align the switch later on. All right, we're ready to start the reassembly process here. And uh, let's see. I am not going to solder this back into place, just so you know. And this will just drop right back in here. Now one thing I do need to remember to reinsert, watch my big head, is the power switch. Put that back on, wrap that around. And now we're gonna work on getting our switch into place. All right, get the blind nuts and everything tightened down here. You may need a pliers just to keep it from turning a little bit. But overall, that went in pretty simple there. It's one of those things, again, don't go like super gonzo tight. Just make sure that they are you know, tight enough that they're not gonna move. We may have to trim some of the metal shielding here. We'll find out in a moment. And no, I'm not gonna use hot glue on this. Power outlet back in there. Let's check out the top shield. If we are gonna need, need no, but I do want to. So uh, I'm gonna grab my black permanent marker. We're just gonna come in and go right there, right there. So you see my two marks are gonna basically come down there and there, and we're just gonna cut that straight across. And quite honestly, I'm just gonna bring it all the way over to the edge. So and there we have Clarence, Clarence. That's your vector, Victor. Over, under, under, done, Roger. And now you can see clearly the rain is gone, but I've also got Clarence there. So uh, we can go ahead and start screwing everything back together that I can throw out. And one thing too, do we have to make Clarence here on this side? We do, so uh, where I put the switch, I have to actually cut this piece off right here, which will take just a quick second. Drop those guys out. This I may actually be able to just use my flush cuts. Still a little bit there, so we're gonna come in on this side. I'll actually go this way with it, so I'm gonna go one of those, one of those. I'll come on, we'll move just a little bit more. Yeah, that pretty much takes care of it. So now we're gonna go ahead, load up our uh, security bits. And just start to tighten these down. And there we have one region free modded uh, TurboGrafx-16. You can see the screws here on the side. I can just go one way for one region, one way for the other. Um, I kind of wish I had button head screws here instead of the cap heads. I may still replace these with button heads eventually, or not button heads, but um, uh, like a countersunk screw almost. So we're gonna go ahead, hook this up. We're gonna test it out, let's go. All right, the time has come. Here is my PC Engine version of Pac-Land. We'll flip it around so you can see the back there. 
We're gonna go ahead. I've got it set uh, one way with the switch. I may have the switch backwards, so it is slid to the back right now. We're gonna power it on, and this is connecting through my Insurrection Industry spark plug. I see it playing behind me. So this is going through my spark, spark plug to my SCART cable into my OSSC, and man, that looks gorgeous. Now, just as easily, I'm going to go ahead here too. You can see my copy there of Bonk's Adventure. This is the U.S. TurboGrafx version. Kapow! And we're going to go ahead, turn that off, flip the switch forward, slide out Packland, slide in Bonk's Adventure, turn the power on. Now, there is an additional mod for this that I could have done that would have given me, I love that look, that would have given me an LED light under the TurboGrafx-16 logo. I didn't do that at this time. Um, overall, this mod is pretty simple to do. I would say if you could do like the RGB mods on the N64 or the Super NES Junior that Voltar has, you should be able to do this. It is important to use that pin or a leg off of a transistor, resistor, capacitor to drive the solder down through onto the pads. When I initially connected it, it did didn't work. I went through and I hit those pads a second time, making sure that I went far down enough in those holes. Once I did that, it worked, as you can see here, rather flawlessly. The TurboGrafx-16 has quickly become one of my favorite systems, and thanks to mods like this, I love it even more now. Now, make sure if you want to pick up this mod, go ahead and check out game-tech.us. Jason's site is awesome. He is a great member of the community. Jason, thank you for creating some awesome stuff that people like me can install and enjoy our systems even more. You are just a terrific member of the community. Thank you, my friend. Um, now, I did pay for this. He didn't cut me any discount. I, I didn't ask for one either. I'm more than happy. At 25 bucks, these are pretty inexpensive and easy to install. Now, if you've got any other comments or questions about anything that I've shown you here today with this mod, with other mods, so on and so forth, make sure that you leave them down below in the comment section. You can also feel free to reach out to me by emailing me at rocksolidmail at gmail.com. You can send me a message on Twitter at rocksolidstudios. We are on Facebook at facebook.com slash rocksolidproductions and Instagram at instagram.com slash rocksolidproductionsgk. Now, if you are looking for additional parts, accessories, controllers, how about, how about a thing called an EverDrive for the TurboGrafx-16? Do me a favor, head on over to CastleManiaGames.com. He has controllers, he has cables, he has EverDrives, all for the TurboGrafx-16. And the cool thing, when you go and you order through Ryan, you earn what's called Castle Cash. It's his rewards program, where the more you spend, the more you earn that you can use towards future purchases. And the wonderful thing is it's just like cash. So if you have $20 in Castle Cash, you have $20 to spend on the website. You can also use promo code ROCKSOLID10 to save you 10% off of most items on the website. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, if you like what you see here, if you want to see more, if you want to be kept the most informed and up to date, hit that subscribe button and that bell notification. That way, every time we upload new content, you are kept absolutely informed and up to date. That's kind of redundant sounding there, isn't it? I think it is. You know what we're going to do? We're going to take you to some other videos that are not redundant and repetitive, kind of like these. Thank you for watching this video. If you would like to support the future of Rock Solid Productions, you can do so by visiting our Patreon page at patreon.com slash rocksolid. For as little as a dollar a month, $12 a year, you'll get early access to all of our video content, exclusive content, and a whole lot more. You can also become a channel member here on YouTube for as little as $1.99 a month. And with that, you get a badge next to your name when you comment or post on the channel, and you are acknowledged whether you are a channel member or a Patreon supporter at the end of each and every one of our videos. You can also support the channel by visiting our Teespring store on screen now, where we have t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, masks, cell phone cases, and much more. Again, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon.